Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, like, thanks for the introduction. And uh, like I said, my name is Thor, and I'm the lead developer at Authentic. And I'd like to talk to you guys today about um, what it is that we're trying to build at Authentic, uh, the problem that we're trying to solve, how we're trying to solve it, and most importantly for this session, uh, why big chain DB and blockchain is one of the core facets of our technology stack. So uh, is that how I do it? Yeah. So uh, essentially what we are at Authentic is a trusted identity verification service and a privacy tool. Now, uh, before I get into exactly what that means, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about my own experience in seeing a need for a service like this. So uh, a little over three years ago, I moved to, I was moving here to Berlin, and like anyone who's moving to a new place, you have to find a place to live, right? So I was looking through the many different listings, like on Craigslist, uh, Vegegesuch, Demoblian Scout, if you guys are familiar with those uh, services. And I came across an ad that uh, seemed quite promising at the time. It was quite near to my office, it was fully furnished, uh, decently priced. Um, and being young and naive, I was quite willing to believe this guy's story about being a pharmacologist based in London who owns a flat in Berlin but isn't willing to sell it, so he wants to rent it. Um, so I had an email correspondence with him, and we probably had something like seven or eight emails back and forth, and I shared some information with him. Uh, but then uh, some uh, raised the red flag for me when he started asking me to transfer money into an escrow account uh, for the deposit, and only then would he send me the keys via post. Um, so again, wanting to believe this, I sent one more email with some fake information out of frustration, but also maybe just trying to gauge his response, to which he quickly replied, telling me uh, never to contact him again and that he'd be more than willing to track me down given that I've already uh, given him some of my information. So very unsettling experience when moving to a new place. Um, to the credit of the site that I was using, I did report the ad and it was taken down almost immediately, but a few hours later, when I was looking through more listings, uh, the same ad was back up, but under a different email, a different name, a different phone number. So this is kind of the uphill battle that a lot of these uh, marketplaces deal with when um, trying to verify users, trying to get rid of fake accounts, scam accounts, and so forth. Another example I want to share, a little over a year ago, I purchased a domain name off an auction website. Uh, completed the transaction, everything was fine. Uh, but then the support team got back to me saying they wanted to verify my account. Uh, so the way they wanted to do this was by placing two temporary hold charges on my credit card uh, under $2 and then have me report back to them exactly what dollar amounts had been put on hold. Um, so actually a fairly novel approach. I mean, if it's your credit card, you should, be, uh, you should have access to uh, the statements, right? Uh, the problem, at least in my case, was uh, the UI for uh, my internet banking didn't actually support showing hold charges at that time. So I had to call the, my customer service representative, and I got routed probably to eight different agencies. I'm sure you guys are familiar with something like that. Um, but all in all, I was able to report it back to uh, the website I was using, and uh, my account was reinstated. But this took about two days, so very cumbersome process. And again. Who's to say if uh, it's a stolen credit card or a hacked bank account? Who's to say it's uh, really you and anyway? Uh, as an example of this, this is a uh, screenshot from a popular dark web marketplace where, among other things, you can buy hacked uh, email accounts, fake email accounts, Facebook accounts, credit card numbers, uh, bank accounts. And I haven't checked recently, but with the Equifax branch, you can imagine what other information might be out there. <coughs> Uh, one more example I want to share with you guys before I get into Authentic is um, uh, the idea of age verification. So I'm sure you guys have seen something like this before, uh, or like this. So if you're trying to see maybe a trailer for an R-rated movie, or you want to access the contents of some mature rated video game, you might have to input your age field. Now, obviously this doesn't really make sense because you can just put in whatever date of birth you want, right? Um, me personally, I always put January 1st, 1985 because when I first started seeing these inputs, that was the cutoff for 18, and I still do it now out of habit. <laughs> um, but there's an inherent flaw here, and that's they're actually asking for more information than they, than they need, right? Uh, a website like this only really needs to know if you're over 16, or depending on what it is, maybe if you're over 21 or over 18, depending on the market. So a date of birth is actually more information than is necessary. So this is where we come in. Um, at Authentic, what we're offering people is a digital biometric passport, uh, which eliminates this anonymity while also ensuring privacy by giving the user 
control over their information. So um, the way this works is we have a very simple verification process. You download the app, uh, you take a selfie. We actually do some verification on the selfie itself to make sure that it's not a photo of a photo or a photo of a video. Um, after that, uh, you scan your national ID or your passport. Uh, we do a face comparison check between the passport photo and your selfie to make sure it's the same person. Uh, and then we do some additional checks to check the integrity of the ID that you're using to make sure it's not stolen, et cetera. Um, and once everything is in place, uh, you get issued what we call this authentic ID. And all that really is is a blockchain transaction which is created on the mobile and completely signed by the user's private key, which we never see. Uh, and we actually take each individual piece of the identity, so your last name, your date of birth, uh, whether you're over 16, and we create uh, what we call claims. And each one of these claims is hashed and then signed by the user's private key, and that's what's stored in blockchain. We then store an additional transaction in blockchain referencing this one as basically a way to say we verified this person's identity. But once it's in blockchain, it's yours. And uh, you have control and consent to who can see it and what you do with it. Um, so why do we need blockchain? Uh, well, as you can guess, it's a secure distributed uh, storage. And it offers us this decentralized control. And that's what we really want to emphasize to the user, that uh, this is your data. You consent to who sees it. Um, so as an example of when I was talking about claims before, as an example, if you were signing up for, let's say, a poker website, and they want to verify uh, your name and whether or not you're over 18, then uh, as you being in control of the information, you would consent to that poker website being able to verify the information to us. And they would send us a claim saying, OK, this person says their uh, first name is Thor, their last name is Carlson, and they're saying they're over 18. Uh, and to each one of these claims, we respond true or false based on whether it's uh, true or false. Uh, we don't say, no, uh, his name is actually Mike, and he recently changed it from Thor, and he's, um, he's over 18. In fact, this is his birthday. He's 27. Um, so yeah. Uh, just a shout out to uh, IPDB and BigChain, um, why we're using them as a solution. Uh, for us, we looked at some other blockchain solutions, but by far, BigChain was the fastest and most scalable of the solutions that we've seen. It's very secure, and I think anyone of you who have uh, played around with BigChain can attest to its simplicity. So when I started working on this project a little over a year ago, I was amazed that within 30 minutes and a Python editor, I could already be creating transactions, signing them, uh, uploading them to the blockchain, and then reading them. I thought that was, because for me, blockchain was always just kind of a big black box of cryptocurrencies. I had no idea um, how it worked. So this has really helped me to uh, learn about this. And last but not least, it's a great team. They've really helped us um, technically and also helped us in honing our vision. Um, for those of you that are interested in potentially using us, um, I'd just like to talk a little bit about our user base. Uh, so we actually have two sort of verticals. Um, one is what we call the sort of full regulated KYC, which stands for Know Your Customer. And these are sort of like financial institutions like banks, um, or any sort of exchange network where they're dealing with financial transactions and uh, there are government regulations in place that say you have to do a certain amount of due diligence to ascertain, <coughs> excuse me, uh, ascertain a person's identity um, to know that the person who's opening this bank account is really who they say they are. Um, same for a betting website. I believe most betting websites have certain regulations in effect that say you have to at least ascertain the person's um, that they're over 18. Uh, the second vertical is what we call the non-regulated KYC. And these are sort of peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces, or you can imagine adult or dating websites, uh, where there's no sort of government regulation in place uh, saying that you have to do this sort of due diligence, but doing so would increase the user's trust. So going back to my example before with the renting website, knowing that people listing their flats had been uh, had been vetted or had been uh, authenticated or verified uh, would certainly increase my trust as a user and make me feel a little bit more comfortable before sending off passport scans, right? Um, so that's authentic. Just to, re just to recap, um, what we're doing is we're building these digital IDs created on the blockchain. We don't store any sensitive information. These are one-way hashes. Uh, the user 
owns the information and has complete control over what the information is, uh, what information is shared. Uh, so control, user control and consent. Uh, so what we're offering is simply a way to verify and authenticate your identity, enabling you to then verify that information to any sort of online service that you wish. Um, yeah, so that's authentic. Thank you, Tor. Uh, so I'm starting to wonder that I really don't win those online lotteries then. <laughs> I get so many spam emails uh, <laughs> sometimes. Um, but yeah, amazing stuff. I mean, we would be one of your first users, actually. So we have a lot of uh, enterprise applications that are crying for a solution like this. Mm. Um, so yeah. yeah, we'll be eating your dog food. <laughs> um, any questions from the audience? Um, so when the, I think, again, like um, here in the space, we all, we see many approaches and also different um, with a similar idea sometimes. So uh, identities are definitely one big topic. Will there be a compatible way or some, have you put thoughts around cooperating with other um, services who provide similar services, or um, yeah, um, is it will it be distributed too? Which can be nice too that some websites will use your identity service and other websites will use other identity services. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think, um, and we've talked to um, people that are in the same space, and we've talked about partnering with. Um, people that are maybe not building digital identities, but in a similar vein and uh, building something together by sort of a plug and play approach. Um, that being said, I think your point about having this distributed. So I know there's um, one website that we're uh, collaborating with that has several different ways to verify your identity. So it shouldn't be maybe a one size fits all necessarily. Hi, uh, thanks a lot for the presentation. I have a small question, a technical one. Uh, how do you secure the identity and the attributes you are you help the users to reveal to some companies. Are you using some kind of PKI behind? Or? Yeah, so it's a similar key structure that, um, uh, that makes the blockchain and Bitcoin possible. So it's a, a key pair that's generated on the phone. Um, so it's a private key that never leaves the mobile. In fact, uh, it doesn't even have to be stored on the mobile. It can be cold storage. Um, and each one of these, um, what we call these user claims, so your name or your last name, uh, this is hashed and then signed by your private key. So the only way to reverse that is by having the actual value. So when you tell uh, Mr. Poker site, like my name is Carlson, they have to then say to us, he's saying Carlson. So it's not you're saying, oh, you can then read the information and then they come and then we look it up and say, oh, it's Carlson. Like it does, for us, we have no way of reversing the information. Do the users, are there any opportunities to back up the keys securely on the device if the device gets burn, stone, or something? Yeah, this is actually something we've been implementing for the last uh, few weeks. And if you're familiar with some Bitcoin wallets, it's a very similar protocol. It's the BIP39 with the 12 words. OK, and the second question, please, when I may, very fast. The uh, German government has issued, I guess, these electronic, you know, electronic identity documents with mm -hmm. similar functionality. Yep. There, how would you comment on that, uh, please? As in, like, are they a competitor, or? Well. Te technically, if, if you could so, compare it technically, because it's something really different, yeah. what they do, and maybe how you see the future. Yeah, Thank so um, that's a great question. And I mean, what we always want to build is a way to verify any sort of identity that you have. So whether it's an EID or simply a passport or just a paper document that, you know, birth certificate or something. I mean, at the moment, we're working with passports because that's an ICAO standard that's across the board for every country in the world. Um, but we want to move into this space as well. So, for example, with a German EID, that could be another way of verifying, uh, creating an authentic account using that as a backing, if that makes sense. Are you seeking to cater for people who don't have passports from countries or, or other kind of IDs like this? So, sorry? Are you, are you seeking to cater for people who don't have passports or driver's license, for example? Uh, at this time, no, because um, we wouldn't know how to create an authentic account without um, having that information. Um, but that is something, I mean, this is a very interesting topic, especially with the refugee crisis. Um, and I know there's another startup here in Berlin that is focused on that. Um, but that's not a space that we're in yet. But it's something we would think about. 